All right, on this one, uh, we're going to be doing the entire lesson on this particular video. And it's going to go through all of the different laws of logarithms. Uh, there'll be a total of four, basically, that we'll discuss. Three main ones, and the fourth one's really an easy one. So uh, that's what we're going to learn to do is write them in expanded form. And then when they're in expanded form, write them in condensed form. Those are going to be the two big ones. Change base formula, this is a really, really easy one, especially if you have a TI Inspire. It's going to be a very easy one. Uh, TI-84 is not going to be a hard one either, so don't worry about that. All right, so the big thing is a product rule. The big thing with the product rule is that multiplication becomes addition. The quotient rule, and that's like a division, quotient rule, division becomes subtraction. And then the third rule is the power rule, which means an exponent becomes a multiplier. If you want to have that down as a shorthand, you can just pause the video and you can write those down real quick. Uh, otherwise, we're going to go through each one of these individually. All right, so here are our three laws of logarithms, okay? If these make sense to you, you can pause the video right now and write these down. Maybe that will help you quite a bit. Uh, there's going to be a total of four of them. Here are three of them. The fourth one is the change of base formula. All right, we're going to go through each one of them individually. The fourth one, of course, is the change of base formula, and here you go on that one. But don't worry, we'll go through each one of these. All right, so let's go through the first one. And as we go through these, what I would recommend that you do is probably after we go through the example of the one, just push pause and you can write one down in your notes. Um, and basically what this is, is this is multiplication becomes addition. All right. And if you notice here, I've got a log base A. It turns into two different logs. Both of them have the same base, and it's base A. So whatever your base was initially, that's going to stay the same here. Then these two things, these two components here that are being multiplied, we just put an addition sign in between these two. So this is... Instead of log base a x times y, it's now log base a x plus log base a of y. All right, so let's look at an example here. This one is a log with a base of 6. That means we're going to break this apart into two separate logs. Both of them are going to have the base of 6. And we're going to just throw an addition sign in between them. Okay, so this is going to turn into log base 6 of m plus log base 6 of n. And that's pretty much it. We, this is the condensed version, this is the expanded version. Okay, and this becomes important later on um, when we're solving some of these equations. All right, so we've got these, this one here. Now let's try another one here. This one's a log base 2, so that means I'm going to separate this into two separate logarithms, kind of like what I did up here. Two separate logarithms, both of them with a log base 2. And this is going to be a log base 2u plus log base 2v. All we did is throw an addition sign here, so multiplication becomes addition. We break it into two different ones and it becomes addition. All right, so let's get a little bit of practice here. Again, if you want to take a second, pause the video, you can and put this in your notes. That's what I'd recommend doing on each one of these. All right, so I want you to try these two. So work through these two, push pause on the video now. After you've obtained your answer, after you've expanded these out, um, then come back and push play. Okay, so hopefully you found out um, that we just have the same base here, 7, 7. You notice this one. Now this one we don't have a base listed, so if you list it like this, it's fantastic. But we, uh, we have to know that the base on this one is a log base 10. Remember, these are one of our common ones that we see all the time. So the shorthand way of writing that one is just log base, uh, just log instead of log base 10. So, but anyway, that should work on both of those. Now let's go on to the second um, rule or law of logarithm which says that if it's division, it now becomes subtraction. And notice this is log base A. Both of these two are log base A. So it's basically the same thing that we were doing before, except that with instead of becoming addition now, it's subtraction. What's on top still remains there, minus whatever's on bottom. If I had two units here on bottom, I'll talk about that in a second. So let's look at an example here. This is log base 13, so I'm going to have that twice, log base 13 and log base 13. And I'm going to have a subtraction sign here. The subtraction sign is going to become, is going to come before the R. So this is the same thing here. We've got a subtraction sign before the R. Now let me talk about that. If I had two of them here, if I had an R and an S, then what it would be is log base 13P minus, and it's minus whatever's on the bottom. So log base 13R minus log base 13S because they're both on the bottom, they're both going to have a minus sign in front of them. That'll help a little bit later on when we get to some of these. All right. Uh, again, we'll go through it one more time. Uh, if you think you can do this one, go ahead and push pause and you can try it. But anyway, this one, both of these are going to be a log base 8, 
and we're going to have a k minus log base 8 and log base x of 8. Excuse me. So again, both of these have a log base x on, on them. This one has a k. We have a subtraction sign here indicating that this 8 here is underneath, uh, is on the bottom, it's on the denominator of this fraction here. Okay, so I want you to try these two. Go ahead and try these two. Expand both of them. Push pause on the video now. After you've obtained your answer, come back and push play. Check your answers here. This one was the subtraction one. Uh, three was on the bottom, so that's why the subtraction sign came before the three. This one was actually addition, so this was the first one that we did. And this is a natural log with them. This is a log base of E, uh, but it follows the same rule, so we're just going to write ln. It's just fine for us now. Okay, the third rule here says that the exponent becomes a multiplier. And that sounds a little bit weird, but let's kind of go through the, the an example on this one before we really explain it up here. What we do here is this exponent becomes a multiplier, meaning that we're going to multiply this entire logarithm here by this exponent. The way we do that is we take this exponent right here, which is 6, and we just move it way out in front. And it becomes 6 times the log base 4 of u. That's it. Okay, so whatever the exponent was, we just move that out to the front. That becomes our multiplier, if you will. But if you want to just think of moving it to the front, that's fine. That will work every time. All right. So we've got this one here. And in this case, our um, exponent is y. We take that y, we move it out in front. This is y times log, ba log uh, b, or log base 10 of b, but we'll just say log b is fine. But we just move that y way out in front, and that's it. All right, I want you to try these two. So try both of these. Uh, push pause on the video now. After you've obtained your answer, come back and push play. Check your answers here. So again, the 2 just comes right out in front. That's pretty much it, and we're done with that one. It was a log base 21, so that stays log base 21. On this particular one, both of these were log base x's, so those remain the same. The 9 was on bottom, so we have the subtraction sign before the 9. All right. This one, this, these become very interesting. Um, we're going to expand these, and it's a little bit difficult. Now, we expand it. To, we're not multiplying by anything here, but we do have an exponent, so we have to identify what our exponent is here. And knowing what we did in the last couple lessons, where we can convert this radical here into a fractional exponent, what we do is we take the fraction and we, and we convert this. This is the same thing as x to the 3 fourths. Remember, the 3 goes on top, the 4 out here goes on the bottom. Now that we have that, we can expand it, and meaning uh, we can move that exponent way out in front. So this is really the same thing as 3 fourths times log base 9 of x. Okay, you try number two. Uh, push pause on the video now. Go ahead and try number two. After you've obtained your answer, come back and push play. Check your answers. All right. So now let's have you try some more. Um, we're converting this one back and forth here. Um, the radical five is going to be five to the one half. We just want to get a little bit more practice on this. Uh, two to the one half would be what? We wrote it as a radical. That would be the square root of two. Cube root of x would be one third. X to the two seven. See if you can do that. Write that down like on a piece of paper or something. See if you can identify what that one is. The seven is the seventh root. Two is my exponent on my x, so this would be x squared. All right. And we've got this one. Go ahead and write this one as a fractional exponent real quick. Hopefully you can identify that this is b to the four fifths. All right, now let's have you try these two. Try these two. After you've obtained your answer, come back and push play. Okay, hopefully you're getting these. Hopefully you can identify that this one was x to the one-half power. And then what we do here is we move this one way out in front. That's how we expand that one. Okay, these two become a little bit more of a challenge. Um, they're a nice challenge, but they are a little bit more of a challenge. So let's look at these. Okay, four, we could say that this is eight to the one-fourth power, which would be accurate. However, eight, we can reduce it down just a little bit further. That's the same thing as two cubed. Two cubed, now we can put it as a fractional exponent. This would be two to the three-fourths power. Now we can move that out in front. Okay, try number two. Uh, push pause on the video now. It's going to be really identical to this. We've got to figure out what 81 is, something to the something power. So see if you can figure out what that is. Push pause on the video now. 
After you've obtained your answer, come back and push play. Check your answers here. Hopefully you could identify that this is the same thing as 3 to the 4th power as 81. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 gives me 81. All right. Uh, now we're going to kind of start combining some things that we've learned already today. Um, I want you to try both of these. Uh, number one is not bad. You're going to have two different steps here, though. Okay, so I would recommend that you do your addition first, then move this three out in front. Always move that in last. On this one, however, I recommend that you do your two, your squared first, because that applies to both the m and the n. So do that. Uh, and then you can move it out in front at the very, very end, but you can distribute that two first. Okay, push pause on the video now. After you've obtained your answer, come back and push play. Check your answers. Okay, notice I broke these two apart first, then I moved my three out in front. You'll want to move this, the exponent out in front, uh, very last. Okay, and notice on this one, this is m squared times n squared. This is what this parenthesis means, that this squared applies to both of those two. Then I broke the two apart, then I moved the two out in front in both of those two. Okay. Okay, now these get a little bit more confusing here. Um, take them one step at a time. Break each one of them apart. All right, so push pause on the video now. See if you can work through each one of those. After you've obtained your answers, come back and push play. Check your answers. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, these become very, very long here. So first thing I did is I broke the x and the y apart, okay, with my addition, because these two are being multiplied. x cubed times y to the fourth is being multiplied, so that's my addition. Then you see how my z to the 8 is on the bottom? That's where my subtraction comes in, so minus z to the 8. Then all I did here is I moved this 3 out, uh, out in front, moved the 4 out in front, moved the 8 out in front, and that's all I really did. Again, if I had 2 here on bottom, z to the 8th, and if then I had, um, um, I don't know, an m, just a plain old m, then it, this would be minus log base 12 m minus log base 12 z to the 8th. So whatever's on bottom is going to have a minus, the subtraction sign come out in front of it. This one here, um, I moved this 4 way out in front. If I did that, this is kind of a different way to do it than the previous one. Both ways will work. Uh, but then when I break these two apart, I have to have this 4 times log base uh, 10. So log 4 times log on both of these. Notice how this 4 applies to both. If you did it where you distributed this 4 first, I would recommend that. I think that's an easier way. It keeps it a little bit clearer. On where that 4 ends up. Okay, here's some more. We want to try these. Now, on this second one here, you're going to have to convert this one to a fractional exponent. This is going to be m to the something power as a fraction. So try both of these. After you've obtained your answers, come back and push play. Check your answers. Again, on this one, same rules. <coughs> Excuse me, apply. This is a natural logarithm, so it's just ln. So I broke these two apart first. This is, these two turn into addition because it's multiplication. Right here, this p is on the bottom, so I just wrote minus p. Notice how this p did not have anything as an exponent other than a 1, so I didn't change that at all. I didn't move that out in front. Um, this one here, I've got m to the 1 half power. Remember, this is a 2 here. m is raised to the first power. Okay, and then I just broke these two apart. Finally, after I broke these two apart uh, with addition because these two are being multiplied together. I broke these two apart with addition. I take this 1 half and I move it out in front. Notice that this 1 half only applies to the m. I don't move this thing way out in front of everything. It only applies to this m, this log base 2 of m. So I just move it out in front of that one. That's it. Okay, now we're going to ask you to condense these. So it's kind of the opposite here. You're going to move those two together. In order to condense them, they have to have the same base, which they do. Now let's see if you can do these two. So push pause on the video now. After you've obtained your answer, come back and push play. Check your answers. This one, all we did is take this 4 here, and it was way out in front, so we just moved that uh, into our exponent, and that's it. Okay, I'd like you to try these two. And when we do these, we're going to do them in the opposite order. So if we have an exponent out front here like we do here, we're going to move that over first. Okay, push pause on the video now. After you've obtained your answer, come back and push play. Check your answers. Okay, notice that this 7th only applies to the m. This is not 8 to the 7th power. The 7th only applies to the m, so that should stay just with the m. 
All right. Now we've got these, and I want you to condense these. Okay, so it's a little bit rougher. Um, not the end of the world, though. And I, at the end, in your answer, I don't want to see this um, as an exponent. Okay, I should not see a fractional exponent. I should see a radical there. That's your hint. Okay, push pause on the video now. We'll try to work through these. After you've obtained your answer, come back and push play. Check your answers. Okay, so we've got a lot here. This is, uh, we moved our 2 over um, as our exponent first, moved our 9 over as our exponent first, and the 5 over as the exponent first. Then these two are being added together, so that's my multiplication here. Minus, so whatever is minus is on the bottom. Same thing here, whatever is minus is on the bottom. Notice with this one, this was 1 third power. Um, as we do that, if we convert that back to a radical, that becomes a cube root of x. Okay. All right, let's see if you can do these. These are going to be interesting. Uh, both of these offer a nice little challenge for you. I'm going to push pause on the video now, if you will. Go through and try to work these out, condense these as far as you can. After you've obtained your answer, come back and push play. Check your answers. Okay, number one, let's adjust that one first. First of all, hopefully you moved the 5 over and the 25 over. This one didn't have anything to move over. Notice how this one is a subtraction. Anytime you see that subtraction, whatever follows that subtraction, it goes on the bottom. This one is also a subtraction, meaning whatever follows that goes on the bottom. So we have two different ones on the bottom. V comes before Z in the alphabet, so V would come first. Okay, down here we ended up with this one-fourth root, or excuse me, one-fourth power on each one of these. So if we convert that to a radical, that would be the fourth root of A times the fourth root of B times the fourth root of C. So that means they're all fourth roots, every one of those. Um, it's the fourth root of A times B times C. That would work just fine. If you wrote it out as this fourth root of A times fourth root of B times fourth root of C, you could, but you can reduce that even further. Now, change a base formula. We talked about this one. This one's going to be the easiest one, especially if you have the TI Inspire. Uh, I'm going to do this one as if you have the TI-84 first. And what this basically means is whatever this number was here, the larger number, if you want to think of it that way, that's fine, goes on top. Whatever the base is, that number goes on bottom. So in this case here, my larger number, if you want to think of it that way, the 23 goes on top. And when I say large, I mean it's, it's larger in like a font size, okay? Not larger, meaning it could be a 1 here, and that would be fine. But, um, but because this one is just bigger... Um, if you want to think of this one as the base, base always goes on the bottom, that's fine too. This is going to be the same thing as log 23 divided by log 5. When you are on your uh, TI-84, um, you're going to type it in just like this. Log 23, close parenthesis, divided by, open parenthesis, log 5, close parenthesis. That will give you your answer. Just type that in, it will give you a fraction. Here's your fraction. Round it to the nearest thousandth, which is three decimals. So there's your fraction. This one, same thing. Again, the the number right here, when I say larger, it's just it's a larger in font size is really all I'm talking about there. Um, because actual numbers, these are smaller. But if you want to just think of this one as a base, the base goes on the bottom, that's perfect too. This is the same thing as log 1.4 divided by log 2. And then you can get your answer. Now, if you're using the TI Inspire, TI Inspire makes it really, really nice. You just type this one in, just type in log, and you type this in log base 2, up top 1.4 and it gives you your answer and that's it you don't have to do this division you only have to do this division thing here if you have the TI-84 or TI-83 uh, but the TI Inspire you just type this left part right in here and it gives you the answer it's really an easy problem okay try these two uh, push pause on the video now after you've obtained your answer on these two come back and push play check your answers and this is just a matter of plugging into your calculator correctly um, try both of these two uh, this one has a log, and you'll you have to see what the base on this one is. Hopefully you can figure that out. Push pause on the video now. After you've obtained your answer, come back and push play. Check your answers. All right, so hopefully you could identify in this one that it's a log base 10. So um, again, if you were using your TI Inspire, you just type in log, and you just have to know that that's a base 10, so you type in 10, 56, and that would give you your answer. Okay, I want you to expand these two. Uh, excuse me, expand the first one, condense the second one. Okay, so this is just giving you more practice here. Um, push pause on the video now. After you've obtained your answers, come back and push play. Check your answers. Okay, well, there's a lot to this one. Um, 
this one, the first thing that I would do is separate all of these. This is ln 4, natural log 4, plus ln k squared, plus ln square root of m. Now the next thing I did here is I convert this one to an exponent, fractional exponent, then I can move it out in front and I'm done. When condensing this one, very first thing I'm going to do is move these into the exponent. So this 4 comes over to this m. This one doesn't have anything, so I just leave it alone. This one's got a 12. I move this 12 over to be the exponent of my y. Now these are all addition, so I just combine them. They're all addition. Okay, now this one gets interesting. And this is a little bit further than probably we'll do in class, but this is an interesting one. Uh, if we wanted to evaluate this one, we're going to condense this one. So the very first thing we do, we know this one, I've got 56, and this is a minus here, that means it's going to be 56 divided by 7. So log base 2, 56 divided by 7, and we know 56 divided by 7 is indeed 8. So what is log base 2 of 8? Now we can plug that into our calculator, that makes it very, very nice if we wanted to do that. If we didn't know, we could just, if we didn't have a calculator on us, we could do it by hand, that's fine. That just equals something, x is what we call it. So I convert it to exponential form, 2 to the x power equals 8, well that would have to be 3. So our answer here would be 3. That would reduce down to 3. See if you can do this one. This one's a nice one. Um, get some practice here. Uh, see if you can work through this one. It'll be a, a challenge for you. Okay, the very first thing you should do is convert that one to a fractional exponent. Um, after you've converted it to a fractional exponent, what we can do at that point is move it out in front. Now I've got one, ha one half log 3, log base 3 of 27. Well, what is log base 3 of 27? If I converted that one to an exponent, um, that would be 3 to the x equals 27, which reduces down to 3. So log base 3 of 27 is just 3. Then I have 1 half times 3. 1 half times 3 is 3 halves. Th that, those are both challenges. They're nice. Um, not impossible, but they are challenging. Okay, these two. I'd like you to try both of these. Push pause on the video now. After you've obtained your answer, come back and push play. Check your answers here. Hopefully you're starting to kind of get the feel for these a little bit. Um, take a little bit of practice, but they're not, they're not bad. Okay, and um, I want you to do both of these. Push pause on the video now. After you've obtained your answers, come back and push play. Check your answers. Both of these are subtraction. That means both of these are going to go on the bottom. That means that on the bottom it's going to be 10 divided by 15 times 6. 15 times 6 is 90. That's where that comes from. Okay, well, this will conclude this video. You can go back in and rewatch it if you'd like to. Or I have some other videos on some other types of problems that you can work through as well.